if we inform people around us, more often than not, we get feedback that is generally positive in form, and yet the data tell us that the positive feedback that we get from others when we announce that we're going after a goal, activate certain reward systems and motivation systems within our brain that then quickly dissipate and then diminish the probability that we will engage in the type of behaviors that actually lead us to achieve that goal. If you want to increase your motivation toward pursuing a goal and you want to increase the probability that you will achieve that goal, that you should engage in so-called accountability, meaning that you should tell people you are going to achieve that goal. Now, I realize that there are some prominent examples in pop culture of people posting something on social media and saying, in three years, I'm going to be you know, playing in Wembley Stadium, or in two years, watch, I'm going to be at the top level of my game, whatever that game happens to be. Sure, there are examples of that, and those are beautiful and inspiring examples. However, the scientific data tell us that if we inform people around us that, for instance, we are going to write a book or that we're going to start a podcast or that we are going to run a marathon or whatever it happens to be, more often than not, we get feedback that is generally positive in form. I think that's good and to be expected. And yet the data tell us that the positive feedback that we get from others when we announce that we're going after a goal, activate certain reward systems and motivation systems within our brain that then quickly dissipate and then diminish the probability that we will engage in the type of behaviors that actually lead us to achieve that goal. I, of course, am not saying that accountability is bad. To the contrary, accountability is a great thing, both to ourselves and to others. It's something that we should all cultivate throughout life. I'm saying don't tell people that you're going to go out and achieve something prior to initiating action toward that goal because, in fact, the positive feedback that we get will diminish the probability that we will continually pursue that goal in a way that allows us to achieve it. So you could interpret the information I just gave you as meaning that perhaps it's better to tell someone who doubts us that we are going to achieve a goal. We're going to get the friction circuitry activated of us wanting to prove ourselves and overcome the, uh, let's just say, the lack of faith in our ability to achieve a goal. And indeed, that can work. There is evidence that can work. but. Then of course you have to find someone who doesn't believe in you, you have to get them to tell you they don't believe in you, and that could have all sorts of deleterious psychological effects that might undermine the goal pursuit process and other things as well. More likely than not, the best thing to do is to simply keep that goal to yourself. You may need to inform a family member or others of you know, where you will be between the hours of say 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. if you're going to be exercising or learning language or meditating, whatever it is during that period of time. But what I'm referring to here is what I will call the don't tell the world rule. Don't tell the world that you're going to achieve X, Y, or Z. Just simply tell yourself. In fact, I would suggest that the more time you can spend with that one or two or three sheets of paper where you defined the goal, the specific actions that you're going to take, how you're going to measure progress, the more time that you can spend with that goal in your mind and on that paper, the higher the probability that you will achieve that goal. That stands in stark contrast to telling everyone around you that you're going to achieve a certain goal, the so-called accountability myth or the myth of accountability within the context of goal pursuit. It turns out there is some utility to having one person that is a so-called accountability buddy if that person is really just strictly addressing accountability, they are reminding you to do what you need to do, or they are asking you, did you do what you said you were gonna do? But that's a bit more of a tough love accountability model. What the don't tell the world rule is really about is not getting the kind of dopamine and other forms of neurochemical reward that come from just simply saying that you're going to pursue a goal, because as you'll soon learn, that dopamine and other molecules too, of course, are going to be critically important, not just for initiating the sorts of actions required to achieve your goals, but for re-engaging and constantly updating your strategy to ensure that you reach your goals. It's worth mentioning that the friction model of achieving your goals does work. I mean, I, for instance, am somebody that if, you know, I were to say to a family member or friend, hey, I'm going to achieve a particular goal, and they said, no, there's no way you can do it, that would recruit a certain set of neural circuits and uh, hormones and neurochemicals in me that would make me much more likely to lean into the required set of efforts to achieve that goal. But there's a danger in approaching a given goal that way, especially if the goal is something that you already want to pursue, which is that then a lot of your effort becomes framed in the context of 
making someone else wrong as opposed to achieving the goal. And of course, you can do two things in parallel. You can achieve your goal and prove somebody else wrong. But there's something tremendously powerful about learning how to derive pleasure from the effort process itself. That is learning to enjoy the process of pursuing a goal for sake of that goal for yourself, rather than trying to pursue a goal simply to prove somebody else wrong. I'll just tell you right now that intrinsic motivation, motivation that is directly attached to the thing that you are doing and route to a goal is the most powerful and sustainable source of motivation.